So the fabric that I'm using is a curtain that I got from Goodwill and then I will also be using this vinyl fabric as well. Um, for my pattern, I just traced a jacket that I already owned. So that's how I got my pattern. But you can buy patterns multiple places and you can use a regular jacket pattern to make your puffer coat. So I went ahead and cut out the lining for the two front pieces for the back that was on fold, the sleeves, and then I also cut out one lining piece for the collar. After I cut out the lining pieces, I then went ahead and cut out all the pieces with batting. So the batting that I'm using is batting that you can find this at Walmart, you can get it from Hobby Lobby, and then I'll also include a link below in the description bar. So for all of your pieces, you should have all of your pieces in your main fashion fabric. You should have all of your pieces in your lining fabric. And then you need all of your pieces cut out in your batting fabric as well. I also cut out one piece for the collar. For the sleeves, I only used one piece. But you can double up the batting to make the coat as thick as you want to make it. Um, so in this particular instance, I only used one layer of batting, but I did cut out only one layer for the collar. So now I'm going to start assembling the jacket. I'm going to start with putting the lining pieces together. I started with attaching them at the shoulders, the two front pieces to the back piece. I attached the shoulders only, and then I'm gonna do the same exact thing with the main fashion fabric and the batting fabric. I will be using clips that I got from Wawak to attach the batting and the main fashion fabric. It's just easier if you go ahead and use clips. That way you're not poking any holes into your vinyl fabric. If you're using a regular cotton fabric, you don't necessarily have to worry about that. But because I'm using vinyl, I don't wanna poke holes into my fabric. So I will just be using clips instead. And again, I am just attaching the shoulders at this point. I will be attaching the shoulders for my lining pieces. And then I will be attaching the shoulders for my main fashion fabric and my batting. Don't forget to backstitch. Next, I will be using a Teflon zipper foot. What I'm gonna be doing with this Teflon zipper foot is top stitching my shoulder seam. Um, you're gonna wanna go ahead and do this now before you attach your sleeve because once you attach your sleeve, it'll be a little bit difficult to do that. And the reason why I'm using a Teflon foot is because I don't want it to slip and slide on top of my vinyl fabric. Now I am trimming some of that bulk and excess off of the shoulder seam. You want to be careful not to trim too close because you don't want your seams to tear. You do need a little bit of seam allowance. But um, I did go ahead and trim some of that bulk down and then top stitching it also helps as well. Now I will be attaching my sleeves. I am trimming some of the excess batting that's around the edges of the sleeves and then I'm gonna go ahead and pin the sleeves with my clips from Wawa. Keep it 
So here's how it will look once you attach your sleeve. I'm also going to do the same exact thing to the other side. As you can see, I'm going to be reducing some of that bulkiness along the seam of the sleeve by cutting that excess batting. Um, I'm going to be clipping the sleeve together with clips from Wawak. There are some great advantages to using clips whenever you're working with batting because batting is so thick and it just it just gives the fabric like a hold that's so much better than clips. I don't know, it's just a vibe. Like if you don't have clips, if you're not already using clips, you need to get you some clips. Cause I'm trying to tell you like, it just does what it needs to do. Like it gives every single time. Now we're going to be going and attaching the collar. So when I attach the collar, I'm going to be using one layer of batting. And then what I'm going to do is pin the center. Then I'm going to pin the two outsides. That way I can make sure that it's, you know, where it needs to be. And then I just fill it in in the center just to make sure that it's evenly distributed across the whole neck. Um, I just want to make sure that it looks good when you're actually wearing it. So after I pin everything together, I then take it to my sewing machine. You speed up your sewing process if you clip everything or pin everything at one time and then go sew. You don't want to sew, clip, sew, clip, sew, clip. You want to clip everything at once and then take it and sew. Because if you're constantly going back and forth, like that slows down your production. So it just makes sense to pin everything in the order in which you will sew it. That way you're saving time when you're sewing your project. Make sure you remember to backstitch. You want to be sure that you're sewing through all the layers. That way you don't have any holes in between your seams. So check periodically to make sure that you're sewing through all of your layers. Remember your seam allowances so that everything fits in the end. But you do want to be sure that you're pressing that batting down as you sew. That way you can see and the batting doesn't get caught on the presser foot. Now we are going to be attaching the pockets. This is just how I decided to make my pockets. I wanted to make a pleat in the center of my pocket and then I wanted to top stitch the pleats. So if you don't want your pocket to look like that, you can simply just cut out the pocket shape and completely skip the pleat. Um, you would essentially be doing the same thing. But I think the pleat gives it like a cute, edgy look and it makes it look not so homemade. Details matter, you guys. We ain't skipping details this year. All right, we're not skipping details this year. We, we adding all the razzle dazzle because that's what's going to bring our projects to the next level, okay? Okay. 
So for the pleat, I am folding it once towards the inside and then I'm folding it once towards the outside. So it's like an accordion. So you're gonna put the right side to right side and then you're gonna flip it out and pin it. And then you're going to pin the bottom as well, just so that you know it stays in place. And then I'm gonna do the same exact thing to the other side. So what I did was I just started in the center and I measured out an inch and my pleats are literally right in between that. So that's what I'm doing. I folded it once towards the inside, once towards the outside and made like this little accordion shape. And that's what gave me my pleat in the center of my pocket. You can definitely do this without top stitching this, the pleat down, but I just like that. I like that stitched, rugged, sporty look. So this is what the pleats will look like after you finish pleating your pockets. It looks so neat and clean, like I'm just feeling it. I really, really like how this turned out. Now I'm gonna be sewing my pocket flaps as well. Whenever I cut out my pocket flaps, I cut them out so that my pocket flaps are a little bit bigger than the pocket square. I wanted my flap to kind of extend because I'm going to be adding a chain and it just looks better that way, in my opinion. So that's how I did my pockets. I personally think that that little detail matters because of the way that I attach my chains. You will see that closer towards the end of the video, but yeah. Um, also, when you're doing your pockets, you wanna go ahead and snip along those edges diagonally that's what's going to help you poke those corners out all the way and it just makes it look neater after i did that i top stitched the pocket so a whole lot of top stitching going on in this project okay the top stitching is essential because of this vinyl i can't really press it flat even if i could press it flat i probably would still top stitch it um again i am using a teflon presser foot because this vinyl fabric is so slippery. So I will have all of the Teflon presser feet um, linked in the description bio as well. So as I get to the corners of this pocket flap, I do like to walk the needle with the hand wheel. I like to slowly walk the needle by hand. That way it's more accurate and it's neater. It does kind of take a little bit more time, but it's, it, it, it always makes your project turn out nice every single time. So you, you will see me walking the needle whenever I get towards like the ends or whenever I get close because I like to get as close as possible and with that motor sometimes I'll go over or not enough so I like to walk it with my with my hand just by turning the wheel so here's a close-up of the top stitching on my pocket flaps and um, now I'm gonna go ahead and add my pockets to my jacket so the reason why you're not gonna close the sleeves is because I wanted to add a pocket to my sleeve now with this vinyl fabric I can't poke holes in it also it's at an awkward angle so I can't use my clips so I like to use this paper tape some people like to call it masking tape. Um, I use this tape so that I can easily lay down my pockets without them shifting. I never ever sew through the tape because if you sew through this tape, you are gonna have a time 
trying to get that tape from up underneath them stitches. I'm trying to tell you. And I know from experience. So I am just taping down the pieces with masking tape. And this helps your project look so much better. Now I'm gonna be taping down the front pocket flaps and then I'm going to be taping down the pocket as well. What I'm doing now, I'm just adding a ruler and I'm just making sure that they're even on both sides. You definitely wanna make sure that it's even on both sides because you don't wanna have this nice jacket with the pockets that aren't aligned. The tape definitely will help you get what you need to get done. So as you can see, I'm peeling the tape back and then I'm sewing. Now I'm gonna backstitch and I'm gonna continue to sew. Please do not sew through this tape. I'm trying to tell y'all, it's hard to peel it off once you sew through it and it does not look good. Be sure that you're lining up your sleeve seam right here. I'm lining that up and then I'm going to be adding a clip right there. You want to make sure that that seam is lined up because that's going to affect the way that your jacket lays whenever you're wearing it. So at this point, you want to make sure that the length of your zipper matches the length of your jacket. If your zipper doesn't match the length of your jacket at this point, you need to get a new zipper. So this is the perfect midway point to make sure that your zipper is long enough or short enough for your jacket. Then you're going to want to go ahead and trim that excess batting along the edge where you will be attaching your zipper. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the jacket closed and then I'm going to be attaching my zipper. I'm also trimming the excess around the collar and I'm also trimming the excess batting along the edge where you will be hemming your jacket. You want to get that excess batting off because you don't really need it right there and you want that to be nice and flat. Searching for music for your next video? I 
I'm outside in the AMG. So now we have the shell of our jacket assembled and you guys, we are halfway through this project. So now after you have the shell of your jacket assembled, you are going to be attaching the zipper to the shell. So again, you want to be sure that your zipper matches the length of your jacket at this point. You want it to come from the collar all the way down to the hem of the jacket. Um, I unzipped my zipper and I'm just clipping the zipper to the outside, the right side of my fabric. As you can see, as you can see, my zipper teeth are pointing outward. They're not pointing inward. If your zipper teeth are pointing inward, then you're pinning your zipper on wrong. Your zipper teeth need to be facing outward. That way you know that you're, you're sewing your zipper on correctly. You can see that my zipper lines up perfectly with the length of my jacket. I've attached my Teflon zipper foot to my sewing machine and I start off with the back stitch and then I go ahead and I attach my zipper. I sew as close as possible to the zipper teeth. You want to sew as close as possible to the zipper teeth. Then after you sew your zipper on, fold it back and, and zip it up so you can make sure that you sewed the zipper as close as possible. If you didn't do that, go back and sew it again. Because once you attach the lining, you wanna be sure that it's sewn on close. That's what's gonna make it look neat and professional. So again, I've attached my Teflon zipper foot. I did backstitch and I am sewing as close as possible. Now onto my lining. What I'm doing is I am clipping the collar piece onto my lining. And I didn't add any notches because I was being lazy. So basically what I'm doing now is essentially I'm adding the notches to my fabric. I'm just being careful that I'm evenly distributing my collar along the neckline. So I folded the collar in half and I folded the jacket in half because I wanted to be sure that I'm clipping the center point of the collar to the center point of the neckline. That's very important because you want your lining in your actual jacket to line up. So again, I am clipping my collar onto my lining piece right sides together. Now that our lining is fully assembled and now that our jacket shell is fully assembled, we can go ahead and attach our lining to our jacket. When you attach your lining to your jacket, you want to be sure that your jacket lining is touching the right side of the jacket. So make sure that the right sides are touching. You should only be seeing the seams whenever you put them together. So pull the sleeves through the sleeve. Then you want to line up each sleeve seam with the sleeve seam. So make sure everything's identical. You're going to be lining up the collar with the collar. You're going to be lining up the edge of the lining with the edge of the zipper. So you want to be sure that you're making everything as neat as possible. Match those seams so that it lays neatly. If the seams aren't matching, when you flip the lining right side out, it's going to sit funny. So make sure that all of your seams are lining up. Make sure that your lining is identical to your shell. If your lining is too baggy, it, it's not going to look right. So you want to be sure that everything lines up. Here is where I'm attaching the lining to the zipper. When you're sewing it, you wanna make sure that you sew the edge with the zipper foot as well, because you need to sew the lining as close to the zipper teeth as possible. Because when you flip it right side out, you don't wanna see too much of the zipper hanging out and you don't wanna see too much of the lining because then you'll be able to tell where you attached it and it just doesn't look neat. 
So when you attach those edges together, make sure you're sewing it with a zipper foot along the edge and you are attaching that as close as possible. You're gonna attach the edges, you're going to attach the top part of the collar, just pin all the way around and make sure that everything is lining up. As you can see, I'm cutting off that batting because it's hanging over a little bit too much and that's gonna create bulk whenever I flip it right side out. So make sure that you're clipping all that off and everything is even all the way around. Also, before you start sewing your lining to your jacket, you're not actually going to sew the hem of your sleeve. You're just pinning it so that it's in place. But do not sew the hem of your sleeve. What you're doing now is just sewing the outside of your jacket. Do not sew the, the hem of your jacket and do not sew the hem of your sleeve. You're just doing the collar. You're just doing the edge where your zipper teeth are at. So watch this part fully before you attempt to sew your lining. Here I am using my Teflon zipper foot and I'm getting as close as possible to my zipper teeth. I'm pressing my finger down so I can feel where my zipper teeth are at and I'm sewing up against the zipper teeth. You're gonna do this nice, neat, carefully, take your time and you wanna be sure that you do this on both sides so that when you flip your lining right side out, all that's exposed are the zipper teeth. So I did both sides of the zipper and then I also sewed the collar. Those are the only pieces that I sewed and attached to the shell of the jacket. Now that we've sewn both sides of the zipper and the collar, you're gonna wanna go ahead and snip those pointy edges of the collar. That way when you flip it out, the points come all the way out. So here you're going to unclip and then you're going to pull your sleeves out and then you're going to flip the sleeves and push them back in the right way. So you wanna make sure that none of your seams are exposed. Pull your collar out all the way and push the lining all the way through. Now, in some cases, this isn't the ideal way to um, attach your lining, but for this specific jacket, it, it looks neat to do this method. So now I'm going to be cutting off the excess batting around the hem of the jacket and then I'm going to fold it inward. I'm going to fold the lining inward and I'm going to fold the fashion fabric inward and then I'm just going to clip. I 
I just run it up before I go. Would you tell the world my secrets if I let you go? I'm gonna do the same thing with the sleeve. I'm folding it in, I'm folding the lining inward and I'm folding the main fashion fabric inward. You wanna be sure that your seams are still lining up even though you're pinning it. Then I'm also pulling out the corners of the collar and I will also be top stitching my collar as well because that's going to make it look so much neater. you made it this far in the video thank you so much for watching we are almost done I just want to add one final touch to my jacket I did add some chains to the pocket I just took my pliers and I opened up the jewelry ring I found these at Walmart you can find these at Walmart on Amazon and then I got my chain and I stuck the holes from the chain inside the hoop and then I slid it up underneath a stitch and then I hand stitched it some more. Here's how the jacket turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching and happy sewing.